Let's move on to conditional image synthesis. Here we want to actually generate images from the ImageNet dataset. And that's a challenging task. Maybe the classification problem is solved, but the generative process and generating images that look like ImageNet data is actually still an open problem. Because unlike uh, human faces, where there is only so much variation, with ImageNet data, you could see the face of a dog or the body of a dog, different types of fish, different types of airplanes uh, from all sorts of categories. So you have a lot of diversity coming from 1,000 classes, and each one of those classes is really diverse. So it's actually a good idea to explore that data set to get a sense of the complications. Maybe the classification part is much easier than the generative part. Let's see if we can do that. A quick recap of GANs, because we need this notation now. It's a little bit different of a notation, but it shouldn't bother you too much. You generate some latent code at random. You push it through your generator. That's going to give you a fake image. You have a discriminator that is modeling the probability of the source given the image. And what is that notation for? We can think of D as outputting a two-dimensional vector. And then all you're doing is increasing the probability of real images being classified as real, fake images being classified as fake. Previously, you had a discriminator that was only outputting a scalar, and these are equivalent because for the other case, you can say my other probability, the probability of being fake, is one minus the probability of being real. So these two are equivalent. And then you are going to be introducing an auxiliary classifier GAN, as the name of the paper suggests. And it's going to be about conditional GANs. You have noise, you have the class label, and then you are going to generate fake images from that class. Here, your discriminator is actually going to output more. That's why the notation changed a little bit. It's going to output uh, two classes here, which is going to say, is this real, is this fake? At the same time, it's going to say, what was the class? If you have 10 classes, it's going to output 10 numbers that add up to one. If you had 1,000 classes, it's going to output 1,000 numbers that add up to one. Okay. Then you are going to have a source loss, which is going to say, is this image real or fake? And then you're going to have a classifier loss. For the real images, you know the corresponding class because you are working with ImageNet data. And you can increase the probability of the correct class. For the fake ones, you actually know the corresponding class because that's going to be the input to your generator. And you know what you input it to your generator yourself. And those probabilities you want to increase. And this is the log likelihood of the correct source. This is the log likelihood of the correct class. The discriminator is going to maximize the probability of the correct source and at the same time tries to correctly classify your images. Your generator still wants to correctly classify the images. At the same time, it wants, it wants the discriminator to make a mistake. That's why you have a minus sign here. So both of them try to classify correctly. The generator is going to make the discriminator make a mistake when it comes to classifying between real and fake. But you cannot simply say, I'm going to output 1,000 classes and then come up with a method that's going to generate all sorts of images for you. You're going to break your problem apart. You're going to have 100 generators, and each one of them is focusing on only 10 classes. And we know that ImageNet data has 100 times 10, which is going to be 1,000 classes. So you're not going to have one AC GAN for 1,000 classes. You're going to have 100 different GANs, each one of them focusing on 10 classes. And that way, you have an ensemble of models. This is because of the complexity of the ImageNet data. And even after conditioning, you're not going to get good images, good-looking images. Therefore, you're going to uh, break your problem into chunks to be able to solve it. Okay, perfect. And then in the end, you're going to get some good looking uh, generated images. But something nice happens. We introduced two metrics 
for evaluating the performance of uh, generated images. One of them was inception score. The other one was Fresh inception distance. Because there is some conditioning going on and some classification going on in the background while doing the training of ACCAN, we can actually try to study interesting things and come up with a new metric based on classification. Now you have some labels to work with. There is this observation that generating higher resolution images is going to improve discriminability. But what do we mean by that? Don't worry about this figure yet. What you're going to be doing is you ask your generator to generate an image for a particular class, maybe generate a zebra. You take that synthesized image, push it through a pre-trained inception model. The inception model is going to give you a class. At the same time, when you are synthesizing your image, you knew that you wanted to generate the image of a zebra. And you can see whether the inception model is giving you the same image. Is this really a zebra? Do they agree? And then you can count. You look at the entire data set, not only zebras, you can look at cats, dogs, etc. And then you can say you can count or compute the fraction of images that your inception network is agreeing with the correct label. And then you can play around with the resolution of your image. These are the resolution of your images. These are the a network that is working at 64 by 64 uh, generated images. So remember, one of them is generator, which is generating 64 by 64 images. The other one is the discriminator, which you're going to push through your inception architecture to give you these scores. So you can play around with the image resolution, with the inception resolution, and the resolution of your generator. And uh, generating higher resolution images is improving discriminability. That's the message. If you don't see it from this figure or this plot, you are going to see it from this other figure. You have a 256 by 256 image. And then uh, from right to left, you are going to reduce the resolution artificially. You're just decreasing uh, using bilinear interpolation, decreasing the resolution. And then uh, this is only focusing on the zebra class. And this is going to count the number or the fraction of images that your inception network uh, classified as a zebra. And the higher the resolution, the higher is going to be this fraction. There is going to be more agreement. This one is tougher to classify. So that one is fine because it's a tougher model. But the message is as you go from right to left, this number is, dro is dropping. The fraction of images that your inception network is doing the correct thing. Now you can start studying that, yes, high resolution generated images are actually more discriminate, more discriminative, or they are more discriminable. Okay, so far so good. Any questions so far? So this is a third metric that you can work with in addition to uh, inception score and fresh inception distance. This is the third one, but this one is applicable only for conditional image synthesis because you know the corresponding class. The other thing that's important is another metric that we can use in the future is using this uh, measure of the diversity of generated images. And let's see, what is this metric doing? These are your real images and they have, they're quite diverse. There is this guy uh, having a sandwich in his hand. This is a sandwich, etc. These are diverse. These are diverse images from real and these are also diverse from artichoke. The synthesized images, and these are actually from ImageNet. Uh, for the hot dog, they, are, they look diverse. This one is less diverse, less diverse, and these are basically the same. So there is less diversity in the generated images coming out of this framework. But how do you actually measure it? There is this MSSC number that is being reported. For real images, these are really low. For the generated images, these numbers are really high if there is less diversity. So we don't have time to go into the details of the metric. It's an old metric, and it is for tasks such as uh, super resolution, where you have a low resolution, and then you want to increase the resolution, and then you want to measure how good uh, the generated images are, the super resolved images are. Now it's a metric that is trying to discount 
some aspects of an image that are apparently not important for human perception. For us, it was really easy to look at these images and say, they look good, they don't look good, they have, uh, they are less diverse, they are more diverse. It's very easy for us. There is actually a paper that we cover in part one of the course that says a VGG network or an inception network trained on classification tasks. They actually agree with what humans say about images in terms of human perception of images. That's why people use inception score or here you're using inception model because there is agreement between what a human thinks of an image and what a classifier, pre-trained classifier thinks of the same image. There is correlation. You can use that or you can use MSSC. It's gonna vary between zero to one. So if this one, this number is very close to one, this number is close to zero, and the lower they are, the better they are, the more diverse the generated images are. And then the way that you're gonna use it as a measure of diversity, this is between pairs of images. What you're actually reporting here, you have 100 randomly chosen pairs of images for a given class, in this case, for instance, for artichoke. And then uh, you compute the perceptual similarity between them. And the less similar they are, the more diverse your images are, your generated images, okay? So MS as seen is a metric for you to compare two images. If you want to measure the diversity, you are gonna compare 100 images together, 100 pairs of images, and that number should be low. And that's the idea. Any questions so far? You can do the same thing using an inception network to measure diversity. And this is actually one of the things that we were doing. It was part of the inception score. Part of the inception score was generating diverse images. At the same time, if you're generating images of a particular class, you wanted the distribution to be narrow and have low entropy. So diversity is part of inception score. Any questions so far? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.